taking an extra turn in any card game will generally always be pretty strong. Card games are balanced on each player taking turns going back and forth, letting them draw cards to get resources to answer the opponent's cards in their hand. However, in Magic the Gathering, there are cards that grant you extra turns, and there are 49 cards with the text that reads, take an extra turn. And if I missed one, either Scryfall lied to me, or this video has become outdated because of a new extra turn spell. But that's beside the point. In this video, I'll be ranking every extra turn spell from worst to best. You probably already know what number 1 is, but you'll never guess what number 7 is. Go ahead, guess it in the comments below, and if you're correct, you'll get an extra turn. Just send this video to your playgroup to prove you got one. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe button for another extra turn. That's two extra turns for things that are so easy to do. It'd be foolish not to. Obligatory plug out of the way, let's get right into it. Before we get to the actual list, there are two honorable mentions that fill out the first two spots, being 49 and 48. First is Emrakul The Promised End, which technically gives an extra turn, but to your opponent. The reason this is technical as opposed to actually being on this list is because they get the extra turn after you take control of their next turn. So they didn't really get an extra turn, they just get the turn back after you mess with their hand. And the other is Phone a Friend, here because it's an acorn card, meaning it was a joke card part of an unset. You have to call someone and have them choose either A, B, C, or D, and whatever they pick is what effect you get, and you can't explain why. If no one answers, then the opponent chooses. It either lets you gain control of a creature you don't control, create two copies of a creature you control, draw seven cards, and the reason I mentioned it, take an extra turn. It's an official card that lets you take an extra turn if you're lucky, but not actually legal in any format except its own. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the actual meat of the video, and talk about the worst extra turn spell in the game. Coming in at number 47 is Temporal Extortion. It's a 4 mana sorcery, and it resolves you take an extra turn. However, when it's cast, any player can pay half the life points to counter the spell. There was seldom a reason they wouldn't want to spend their life, as it's worth it to cut you off of something as strong as an extra turn, one of the best effects in Magic. This is especially true in multiplayer formats, where anyone can choose to do it. And if it gets countered, you just lost 4 mana and a card in your hand for pretty much no reason. It sets you back heavily in both mana and card advantage, and whoever countered the spell by paying life hardly had to use any of their resources to take advantage of your weaker game state. And the only extra turn spell on the slip that gives an opponent an extra turn comes in at number 46, and that's Eon Frolicker. It's a 4 drop elemental otter, which funny enough, of the 3 otters in the game, 2 share this type line, shout out to Lutri, and the other is Thieving Otter if you're curious. Anyways, enough about otters, let's get back to Eon Frolicker. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you give an extra turn to any opponent, However, until your next turn, you and your planned walkers gain protection from that player. This prevents them from being damaged, targeted, or enchanted by anything that player controls. The downside is they can still destroy your creatures, and you're not protected in that regard. In a one-on-one, -on -one, this card is atrocious, but in Commander, it's very, 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 and I mean very slightly above awful. It lets one of your opponents grow their board faster than everyone else, but at least they can't hurt you doing the extra turn? That being said, there are very few situations that you would ever want to do this unless you're playing some weird politicky group hug deck. Number 45 is going through Magosi the Water Veil, a pretty terrible land. It comes in tapped and can tap for blue, or you can pay a blue to tap it to put an Eon counter on it. You can then tap it to remove an Eon counter to return it to the hand and take an extra turn. This seems like it would be pretty decent, except you skip the turn you put an Eon counter on it. The only way this card is any kind of good is by moving an Eon counter on Out of Tombs onto it with Nesting Grounds. What a great 3 card combo that you can achieve by just casting a regular extra turn spell. The land coming in tap make it so you have to wait an entire turn before you even get a chance to do anything unless you have like an Amulet of Vigor or something. Even then, Magosi is susceptible to any kind of land destruction. One strip mine just ruins your day and you just wasted all that time and effort on an awful land. A lot of extra turn spells are usually on the higher side of prices as far as mana goes, and there's a reason this card is only a dollar despite just having one printing forever ago. Next up on the list is number 44, Plea for Power. A full mana sorcery where every player has the vote for either time or knowledge. If time gets more votes, you get an extra turn, but if knowledge gets more or it's tied, you draw three cards. So it's an extra turn spells if your opponents are really nice, it really is a plea. You have to be like, please let me get an extra turn, I promise I won't attack you if you do. More likely than not, you're going to just be drawing 3 cards, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially for 4 mana with no downside. So even if you don't get the extra turn, the draws aren't the worst, especially since you don't have to discard those cards. But for the purposes of being an extra turn spell, it's also not very great. And there's way better ways to look at 3 cards from your deck, have you ever heard of a card called Brainstorm? Coming in at number 43 is one of the easiest to cast extra turn spells mana wise, and that's Seed Time. For just 2 mana, you can cast it to take an extra turn. So why is it so low? Because of when you can cast it. You can only play seed time if an opponent casts a blue spell that turn, and you can only use it during your turn as well, so you can't use it as some kind of gotcha during someone else's turn. 
It basically boils down to if you get an extra turn spell if one of your cards got countered, since it would likely be from a blue source. The restrictions for activating are just too narrow, and while it's a cute card, more often than not it's just going to be sitting in your hand. A good card shouldn't have to rely on your opponent doing something specific in order to function. While counter spells technically on this criteria, everyone's going to be casting a spell that you can count it, not everyone is even going to be playing a blue card. If they aren't, Sea Time is just a completely dead card in your hand, and why it's only number 43. The 42 slot is another creature, this time being Warm Fang Manta. Want to lose your next turn for 7 mana? Because now you can, as when it comes into play, you have to skip your next turn. The only trade off to this is that when it leaves the battlefield, you get to take an extra turn. While this effect is quite terrible, you do get to take an extra turn. It's very slightly better than the card before it, because at the end of the day, it's still a 6 1 creature with flying that can at least do something? And when it does leave the battlefield, you do get to take 2 turns instead of just 1. It takes a lot of time for you to actually guarantee to get the extra turn, rather than just negating the effect that made you skip because it leaves the battlefield before your next turn, but it's something I guess? We have our first enchantment at number 41, and that's Search of the City. This card needs a ton to go right to actually gain its effect. When it enters the battlefield, 5 cards are XL from the top of your deck. Then when you play a card that tears a name with one of those cards, you put it into your hand. However, you only get to add one of them, even if two or more are exiled. So if you exile three islands, you have to play three separate islands to get them all into your hand. Only after all cards exile with Search of the City are gone, do you get to sacrifice it to get an extra turn. There are very little cards that can get cards out of exile naturally, so you basically have to be getting that with Search of the City's effect. If it ever even gets removed before you get the cards exile with it, you basically lose the exile cards along with any chance of taking the extra turn in the first place. It requires a ton of work to get the extra turn, but at least you don't need to lose a turn to do so, so... Eh? Now we move on to our first artifact for number 40, and that's Gaunti's Aether Hut. This card is a 6 mana legendary artifact that gives you 2 energy counters when entering the battlefield or whenever another artifact does. Then you need to pay 8 energy counters to exile Gaunti's Aether Hut to take an extra turn. While hitting 6 energy counters isn't the hardest thing to do in the world, since it costs 6 mana to actually be able to do so, you have little ways to get it out quickly. It immediately puts a target on your back as soon as it hits the battlefield, and unless you have enough energy to immediately exile it for its effect, it's likely not going to stick around. There is no shortage of artifact removal in any format, so it's pretty easy to handle Gaunti's Aether Heart before it really becomes a problem. If you cheat it out early, it has the same problem. It makes you a target to take you out of the game before you can actually get the 6 energy counters. It's a decent enough extra turn spell when the energy counters line up, but a little too costly of an investment that keeps it far down on this list. We're sticking with artifacts number 39, where we have Time Sifter. At the start of each upkeep, each player exiles the top card of the library, and the one who views the highest cost takes an extra turn after that turn. There can't be ties, so this keeps going until someone wins. Time Sifter is decently enough, especially if you have a card like Sensei's Divining Top that lets you control the top card of your deck to ensure you have a high mana cost there to keep getting the extra turn. The downside to Time Sifter is that anyone else can get an extra turn, and it can severely turn against you if you lose the coin flip. It only costs 5 mana of any color, so a Time Sifter is relatively easy to get onto the battlefield. It's a card with a big gamble, as giving your opponent an extra turn can be game ending, but it could also give you multiple extra turns. I do love me some gambling, so Time Sifter is definitely my kind of card, but probably not the greatest card out there. For number 38, we have our first extra turn spell with no downside that relies on outside factors, except for one thing. It requires you to correctly guess a coin flip. If you do for just 3 mana, you get a free turn. There are a few cards that you flip multiple coins and choose one, like Crack's Thumb, so in certain coin flip decks, it's actually not the worst card in the world. Outside of that though, for 3 mana, you get a 50-50 on taking an extra turn. There's no downside to losing the coin flip, except for just not getting the extra turn, so it could be worse, but it's still not great in 90% of the decks when you're spending 3 mana to maybe get an extra turn, instead of just spending that mana to guarantee get an extra turn. The last enchantment on this list actually is Second Chance, which takes number 37. It's a 3 mana enchantment that during your upkeep, if you have 5 or less life, you sacrifice it and take an extra turn. It's basically one final push to try and win the game with it. It has to be on your battlefield during your upkeep, so generally you have to have it on your battlefield for a fun turn cycle, before you can even get an attempt to activate its effect. This gives your opponent a chance to remove it, or just take you out of the game before you even have a chance to play it. Unless you manage to cheat it into the battlefield off turn, odds are you're not making it to your next upkeep with 5 or less life. But there are ways you can achieve it, and extra turn spells are good, because sometimes one extra turn spell is all you need. So second chance, while specific, can work out fine under some very niche circumstances, which is why it's above the ones in the 40s, but not anywhere beyond that. We return the artifacts with Ugin's Nexus at number 36. This is actually an anti-extra turn card, as it makes any player that would take an extra turn skip it instead. Unfortunately, this also includes yourself, so you can't use it to gain an extra turn while it's on the battlefield. But, 
If it ever goes on the graveyard from anywhere, you get to take an extra turn. So if you have 5 mana and a removal spell to spare, you can get an extra turn. It makes it so your opponents won't be destroying it since they don't want to give you a new turn. It's fairly easy to destroy it with a plethora of artifact removal that you control. It is harder to combo with since it's a legendary artifact, but not impossible with Oz gear mixed with Pole from Eternity on an Itrocon Scepter. Can you believe it? We broke Itrocon Scepter. We return the creatures with the number 35 spot, being home to Timestream Navigator. To 1-1 one, one for 2 mana, that you can pay 2 mana and 2 blue to tap it to put it on the bottom of your library to gain an extra turn. You do need the City's Blessing, however, which is given when you have a card with a Ascent on the battlefield and control 10 or more permanents. Since this includes lands, it's not too hard to get. Even if you lose any number of permanents, you permanently keep the City's Blessing for the rest of the game once you actually achieve it. This cost is actually pretty moderately easy to reach, and if you have Helm of the Host on it, you can continuously get extra turns very easily as long as you have 4 mana available. The downside to Time to Navigator is that it's on a vulnerable creature. It doesn't have indestructible or hexproof or anything, so it can easily be removed before you can even think about getting the extra turns. However, if you do have ways to load it up with protection and ways to copy it, you have a pretty decent extra turn generator, it just takes a bit too much work to be worth it a lot of the time. Save of the moment is a part of the cards that give you a strong effect at the cost of losing something else. This card sits at the number 34 spot, has it a 3 mana sorcery so that you take an extra turn, but you skip your untapped step of that turn. So you don't get to untap any of your permanents during this turn. However, if your creatures have Vigilance or something like that, you can continue to push your advantage forward. Alternatively, if you have ways to untap permanents anyways for stuff like Wilderness Reclamation so you can still play your cards. The downside is still a pretty bad one, but not the worst if you have toys to play around it. Much like other cards that have similar trade-off effects like Bontu's Last Reckoning. It's pretty cheap to cast as well, letting you take advantage of the mana you would still have up since Save of the Moment isn't a huge mana sink. For number 33, we have the extra turn spell that casts the third highest, granted the ones above it are not actually being cast for the regular mana cost, and that's Expropriate. Expropriate has every player vote for time or money, and every time vote gives you an extra turn, while every money vote lets you take a permanent from the player that voted for money. If you manage to cast it, Expropriate is a pretty fantastic card. Since it counts your vote, you're guaranteed to get at least one extra turn, if not more. This effect doesn't target either, so it can hit anything including lands on your opponent's field, so it gets around stuff like Hexproof and Protection. The only downside to Expropriate is its absurdly high mana cost. 9 mana is a giant ask, and while there are ways to cheat around the mana cost, you would still need to draw into those ways to cheat it out. It's XL after the fact, so there's no way to have some weird graveyard shenanigan loop with it, but overall it's a pretty fantastic card all around except for those pesky pips in the top right. Back on creatures, we have one of the few cards with champion, one divine profits for number 32. When it enters the battlefield, you have to exile a merfolk you control until it leaves the battlefield. This is probably the best champion card, as when it deals combat damage, you can sacrifice a merfolk to just take an extra turn. Murpho decks are no stranger to flooding the battlefield as well as making it so creatures can't be blocked, so it's not too hard to take an infinite amount of turns through combat alone if your opponents don't have any ways to answer your wonder and profits. It does cost 6 mana, it doesn't have haste or protection or anything, so it generally takes a turn cycle to be able to even get a chance at an extra turn. It still requires you to actually be able to get in for damage, and if you can't it's just a 4-4 merfolk with no other special abilities. But in the right decks, it's pretty alright. We've reached the newest card that gives an extra turn on this list, Ikamore Gauntlet, at number 31. This artifact gives all your planeswalkers the loyalty ability to proliferate for zero, or minus 12 them to take an extra turn. Also, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you can put a counter on a permanent that already has one. This card is a huge boost to Super Friend and or Planeswalker decks, whatever you want to call them, and give them another ultimate that can be game winning. If you have a field of Planeswalkers, you can minus 12 multiple of them if you have the loyalty for it, and the reason this is so low is because you actually need Planeswalkers to take advantage of it. 12 loyalty is still a big ask, even in dedicated Planeswalkers deck, especially in multiplayer formats where multiple opponents can attack into your Planeswalkers to take care of them before they even get close to it. It also requires Ikamore Gauntlet to stay on the field, something that's harder to do since it's an artifact, and dedicated artifact removal is available in most colors. Sorry, Black. All that being said, if it and Planeswalkers do stick around, it's a phenomenal card that can win the game, especially if you stack it with other Planeswalker ultimates with effects that proc at the start of your turn. We reach number 30 for Lighthouse Chronologist, one of the few cards with level up they left for dead in Rise of the Eldrazi. It's a 2 drop creature that can level up by paying blue mana to put a counter on it. Then, if it's level 7 or higher at the start of each end step, unless it's your end step, you get to take an extra turn. This means that as long as it's level 7, you get to have 2 or more turns for each cycle. In a 4 player commander game, you get 3 extra turns instead of just 1 from a traditional extra turn spell. The downside is at the end of the day, Lighthouse Chronologist is still a creature with no protection, not to mention you still need to dump 7 mana into it to make it level 7 unless you have ways to put more counter on it other ways like proliferate. However, if you do get to the point and give it some protection with some good old boots, that card can become a giant problem for the rest of the players. It's amazing once you get to level 7, but requires a heavy mana investment that can only be done at sorcery speed, 
and odds are it'd get removed by the time you actually hit level 7, which is what keeps it in the lower half. And for the first shot of the 20s at number 29, we have pieced it together, Sorcery from Alchemy. It has a starting intensity of 1, and when you cast it, all copies of it gain an extra intensity permanently. Then when you cast it when its intensity is 4, you get to take an extra turn after it. If you have ways to cast pieces together out of your graveyard, you get its intensity to 4 rather quickly. And once you do, you get easy access to a 1 mana extra turn spell. Yes, yes, alchemy bad, red it gold me now. It only draws one card, but chaining pieces together to cast a 4 intensity one is pretty strong. It's the only digital only card on this list, and the only one that currently gives an extra turn. It does still need a lot of moving tools to make work, but when it does it can become a problem. Number 28 has our first planeswalker located for it, and that's Mu Yanling. So he's a 6 mana planeswalker with 4 star loyalty, then you can plus 2 to make a creature unblockable, minus 3 to draw 2 cards, or minus 10 to tap all creatures your opponent's control and take an extra turn. You do need to double her loyalty counters to get to the extra turn, but if you do, it's one of the best outcomes for it since all your opponent's creatures are tapped down and making them defenseless, making it easier to get damage in. Wu Yanling does have the downside of being a planeswalker, so it requires her to actually stay on the field to ever get the 10 loyalty. The rest of her loyalty abilities are pretty uneventful. Minus 3 is a pretty big axe that's a draw 2 cards, and making a creature unblockable is fine, but on the 6 mana walker, the effects need to be a bit stronger to consider using her. Especially since you need to add 5 extra counters to her to get her extra turn effect, creatures can just attack into her, making it even that much harder. Staying on the planeswalkers, next on the list is number 27, and that's Teferi Timebender. It's on the very weak planeswalker, but it's almost a strict upgrade over Mu Yanling in almost every way. It costs 6 mana as well, and comes in with 5 loyalty, and the extra turn ability is a minus 9, as opposed to Mu Yanling's minus 10. It has a minus 3 to draw 2 cards as well, but you also gain 2 life in the process. Not a huge deal, but a nice bonus. Then you can plus 2 him to untap a target artifact creature. This is a pretty decent plus 2, as it helps enable combos of things you want to be untapping to keep using their effects without having to wait a full turn cycle. The fairy at the end of the day still takes 6 mana to cast, and has the same problems that Wu Yanling has, but it's almost strictly better cards, so I'm needing 2 different colors of mana. Let's go back to creatures, and Modami the Aidsless hits number 26. It's a 6 mana creature that, when it deals combat damage to a player, you take an extra turn, but it can attack during those extra turns. However, if you have a way to force Modami to attack, you can get around this to keep taking turns with something like an Illrog the Raze Boar that puts it onto the battlefield attacking. The downside to Modami is it has to actually connect to the opponent in order to be able to actually gain the extra turn. So if your opponent has a way to block a 4-4 fire, then Modami doesn't do anything. Not to mention it doesn't have any protection, so it can just as easily be removed by any removal spell, but it's solidly in the middle of the pack for extra turn spells. For number 25, we got our Magistrate Scepter, a 3 mana artifact that you can tap and remove 3 charge counters on it to take an extra turn. In addition, you can pay 4 mana to tap it to put a charge counter on it. There is a strangely wide card pool that puts charge counters on permanence that make it easier to get charge counters onto Magistrate Scepter. When you remove the counters, Magistrate Scepter doesn't get removed from the field, so it lets you stack up charge counters to take a bunch of extra turns in a row. It is an artifact, so removal is more frequent to it, but it can steamroll a game once it gets going. It's lower on this list because it does require a fair bit of setup to get to the crazy good levels, which is why it's only number 25 and not higher up on this list. These next three are going to go by very quickly because they all literally have the same effect in mana cost, so instead of rating them by effect, I rated them by how cool their artwork is. At number 24 we have Final Fortune. For two mana you can take an extra turn after the current one ends, but you lose the game at the end of that turn. The only difference Final Fortune has against the two ahead of it are that it's an instant. While this technically makes it better, it has the worst out out of 3 so it's below them, even though it should objectively be 22. But it's my list so fuck you. While it becomes a time bomb after casting, sometimes all you need is that one extra turn to win the game. In addition, there are cards that can prevent you from losing the game like Platinum Angel. And since it only costs 2 mana to take the extra turn, you still have access to most of your resources. Alternatively, if you have a way to force it to end, like with Discontinuity, you never actually reach the end step and you skip losing the game. I'll go through the next two quick since the effects are the same and everything I said about Final Fortune applies to them too. The only difference is the sorcery speed as I mentioned. Number 23 goes to Warrior Oath, which the Portal 3 Kingdom one is pretty neat and the Double Masters one has pretty sick flavor text. Then number 22 comes Last Chance. The little Gary one is cute, but the real highlight is the Showcase Dominaria Remaster one. That dragon looks sick as hell. For number 21, we have the last of the effects that gain you an extra turn at the cost of making you lose the game after them and that's Chance for Glory. It's a 3 mana instant that gets all your creatures indestructible on top of the extra turn. So it gives all your stuff protection to then win the game on your extra turn by finishing off combat damage after you make creature trades. Like the last entries, the loss of the game can be avoided if you end the turn before the end phase. It's the best of the lot because of the extra clause of giving stuff indestructible and is benefited by being an instant since it mixes the extra turn spell in with a combat trick. At number 20, I half lied about losing the game after taking an extra turn because it's Alchemist Gambit. This card costs 3 mana and gives you an extra turn but you lose the game at that turn end step. As a bonus, damage can't be prevented during that turn. You can choose to ignore the effect that makes you lose the game entirely though if you pay its cleave cost of 7 mana. 
If you do this, the code doesn't make you lose the game with it, and this is what pushes it over the edge over the last few entries on this list. And even if you don't play the cleave cost, it has the same workaround as the other one. It does get exiled after the cast, so there's no shenanigans to be had looping it with it, however. We've reached the last creature that gives extra turns, and that's Sage of Hours at number 19. It's a 2 mana human wizard with heroic, meaning it gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter each time a spell targets it. Then you can move all its plus 1 plus 1 counters to take an extra turn for each 5 counters you removed. This doesn't get rid of Sage of Hours, and those plethora of raves to give it plus 1 plus 1 counters easily outside of its own effect. This lets you load up with counters to take a ton of extra turns that you stack it up with more counters to take even more extra turns. It does take 5 counters to be able to start it off, and it has the downside of being a creature that can be interacted with before you get a chance to use its effect. Creature removal is the one thing that all colors have access to, so you do run that risk of it being removed if you do play Sage of Hours. However, if you protect it, you can start getting tons of counters on it, making it the best creature that gives extra turns. Returning the Planeswalkers, number 18 goes the Val Zarek. It comes in with 4 loyalty, and for a plus 1 you can tap a permanent, then untap a different one, minus 2 to deal 3 damage to a creature or player, and a minus 7 to flip 5 coins and take an extra turn for each heads. It has the downside of playing a planeswalker, so you need to keep it around to be able to use its ultimate, unless you can do it instantly with something like a Vorinclex on the battlefield. While Zara can give you up to 5 extra turns, but also has a chance to not give you any. It's all up to look on how many extra turns you get, which is why it's not quite the strongest extra turn planeswalker, even though its effects are overall pretty decent, but as an extra turn spell, having to rely on luck isn't really worth it. What does take the title of best extra turns planeswalker is the fairy Master of Time at number 17. For 2 mana you get a 3 loyalty planeswalker that you can plus 1 to draw a card and discard a card, minus 3 to phase a creature you don't control out, and a minus 10 to take 2 extra turns. Unlike other planeswalkers, the fairy Master of Time lets you activate a loyalty ability during any player's turn, the same time you could cast an instant but you can still only use one once per turn. While well, normally planeswalkers are weaker in multiplayer formats since multiple players can target it, since you can have it gain loyalty during everyone's turn, it becomes much better to protect. It can easily come down on turn 2 with 2 islands at a soul ring, so it becomes much easier to get to 10 loyalty counters without the fairy getting damaged. Plus, you get 2 extra turns instead of just 1 for all your troubles. The only tribal card on this list, number 16, belongs to Notorious Throng. It's a 4 mana spell that creates X11 black fairy tokens with flying, where X is the damage dealt to your opponents that turn. Alternatively, you can pay 6 mana to cast it for its prowl cost, which can be paid the turn you dealt damage with a rogue to get the same effect, but gain an extra turn as well. It does require you to deal damage with a rogue to get the extra turn, but there are a lot of rogues that are unblockable that are also just good to play in general. Even if you don't pay its prowl cost, it's still a pretty decent effect that takes advantage of big bursts of damage. 1-1 one, one is a small stat line, but when you can make dozens of tokens for just 4 mana, and ones with flying no less, they become a lot better. Its prowl cost is a bit specific, but 6 mana is moderately common for an extra turn spell, and you still get the token creation effect, so you have an army of tokens that can fly for your next turn. Perhaps less good in constructed formats, but it's a pretty fantastic choice in Commander. We made it to the last multicolored extra turn spell, with Time Steve taking the number 15 spot. It's a simple 2 mana artifact that you tap to sacrifice 5 artifacts to take an extra turn. Hitting 5 artifacts on the battlefield is rather easy, hell, Thopter Assembly lets you do it with just one card, or you can use the classic Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry combo to achieve it too. It's pretty easy for Time Seed to start making infinite turns, but does require a fair bit of moving parts to work. Not to mention it's still a permanent, an artifact no less that makes it susceptible to removal. Odds are if Time Seed is on the battlefield, you're playing a deck that's gonna abuse it, so you immediately become a target. Time Seed isn't really good in constructed formats, as it's a bit too slow to get going to be worth it, but it's fine enough in Commander. The only legendary spell on this list, Constant Pole of Sundering, comes in at number 14. It's a legendary sorcery, meaning you can only cast it if you control a legendary creature or a planeswalker. It's a basic extra turn spell, but you also return a non land permanent to an owner's hand, and then Constant Pole of Sundering gets exiled so you can't do any weird looping stuff with it. Its casting is a little narrow due to it being a legendary sorcery, but it's not too hard to have a legendary creature on the field, especially in Commander where you always have access to one. Returning a permanent is also a solid bonus effect, as it lets you take care of a card that would be a problem on your current or next turn. It only costs 6 mana, so it's not too hard to achieve, and does enough that makes it a great extra turn spell, but not enough to cut the top 10. Part the Water Veil doesn't either, and similarly the Constant Pole of Sundering, it costs 6 mana for number 13 on the list. You take an extra turn and exile it, but you can pay 9 mana instead to cast it for its awakening cost, which then you put 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a land and turn it into an elemental creature. This gives you an extra body for your next turn, and unlike Constant Pole Sundering, you don't need anything on the field to use it. At worst, it's a 6 mana extra turn spell with no condition to downsides, and at best, you get a bonus 6 seed creature as an upside. The last of the unconditional 6 mana extra turn spells is Walk the Aeons, filling out number 12. It's a 6 mana card that lets you take an extra turn, but you can also sacrifice 3 lands to put it back into your hand with buyback. Unlike the last two entries, Walk the Aeon doesn't exile itself either, 
so you can recur it through whatever ways you want if you can place cards out of your graveyard. Even if you can't and you have Islands of Spare, you can keep it in your hand to keep casting it for extra turns. Rock the Aeons is the best extra turn spell you can be casting for 6 mana, and one that can be recurred for a bit of a cost, but a recurable extra turn is far from bad, which is why it's so high on this list. Just missing out on the top 10 is Temporal Mastery at number 11. It's a 7 mana extra turn spell that exiles itself, but if you draw it for your draw per turn, you can cast it for just 2 mana. There is no sort of ways to put it on top of your deck so you can always draw it, especially with widely played cards like Brainstorm and the like, so casting it for its miracle cost is surprisingly easy. And a 2 mana extra turn spell is phenomenal. It does get exiled so you can't loop it, but then again it'd be way too broken if it went anywhere but the graveyard. Even then, 7 mana is not the worst mana cost you're paying for an extra turn spell, especially one that can cheat around its cost entirely if you have other ways to cast it. There are a few better than it that keep it just out of the top 10, but don't make a mistake, Temporal Mastery is fantastic. To kick off the top 10, we're starting with the Terror of 2021 Standard, and that's All Runs Epiphany. For 7 mana, you get 2 1 1 bird tokens with flying and take an extra turn, then it's exiled. You can also cast it for 6 mana if you foretold it. Foretelling is an ability you can do by paying 2 mana that puts it in the foretell zone by exiling it face down. Cards here can actually be interacted with outside of actually casting them. Every card on this list can be lost to something as simple as a Thought Seize or really any discard spell, especially because they all generally cost a fair bit of mana so they're probably going to be in your hand for a fair bit. But you can foretell Arlen's Epiphany as early as turn 1 with the right hands, making it so you always have access to the extra turn spell and it can't be discarded. Its foretell cost makes it only cost 6 mana, which is about common for most extra turn spells, and the flying birds you get are a nice bonus. Fortel is probably one of the most underappreciated mechanics, and All Runs Epiphany is one of the best Fortel cards out there. Coming in at number 9 is Beacons of Tomorrows, an 8 mana extra turn spell, but after casting, it shuffles into your deck rather than going anywhere else. While the casting cost is a bit high, being able to continuously see the card, especially if you have little to no cards in your deck, is great. If you only have Beacons of Tomorrow in your deck, you can take infinite turns until you win the game since you're always drawing it. While it is a big cost to have this much mana, having an extra turn spell you never actually lose is pretty fantastic. But if you have ways you can keep tuning it out, is another way to have access to an extra turn pretty much all the time, which is a pretty solid trade-off for its high cost. But number 8 is a pretty strictly better card in just about every way, and that's Nexus of Fate. It costs 1 less mana, and is an instant instead of a sorcery, and is actually the last instant on this list. Everything I said about why being in Samara is so good can be applied to Nexus of Fate, but has the added bonus of being shuffled back into the library if it goes in the graveyard from anywhere whereas Beacons of Tomorrow needs you to specifically cast it. So it can't get Thought Seize and Lost Forever, because since it went to the graveyard from anywhere, it just goes back into the deck, then you have a way to loop infinite turns, and an easier way than its sorcery counterpart. Making its way to number 7, it's the last creature on this list, and that's Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. It's a 15 mana spell that can't be countered, and when you cast it, you take an extra turn. Then you have a 15-15 flyer with protection from any spell that isn't colorless and Annihilate of 6, which if you don't know what that means, whenever you attack someone, they have to sacrifice 6 permanents. Then when it's put into a library from anywhere, where it's shuffled back into the deck instead of going into the graveyard. While well, you don't often cast Emrakul for its 15 mana, but cheat it out by casting it for free, you still need to cast it for its extra turn effect, so it can't just be put onto the battlefield, but there are plenty of ways to make you cast it normally for no mana. Hell, it's the reason Tempo's Trickery got banned because this would immediately make a non-game. Once Emrakul hits the battlefield, you pretty much win the game in most constructed formats. You get an extra turn to ensure that even. It's almost impossible to deal with, and a 15-15 with giant evasion is nothing to scoff at. It's too good to be banned out of Commander and Oathbreaker, and it's no stranger to staking up other formats. The extra turn clause could be taken away, and it'd probably still be great, it's just the fact it gives you an extra turn is just icing on the Eldrazi cake. And for the next three entries, like the red extra turn spells from earlier that all sell the same effect, I'm making them based on their art. For number 6, we have Capture of Jingzhao, which for 5 mana lets you take an extra turn. No glamour, no bonus effect, just a good old fastened extra turn with no frills. It doesn't get exiled, so you can cast it from the graveyard, it'll keep getting out from there and to keep using it. Capture of Jing Zhao is the least cool art because I mean, look at it, nothing really exciting is happening, plus it's expensive as shit. Number 5 goes to Temporal Manipulation, which honestly is also kinda bad art. The secret layer one is kinda cool, but like what the hell is the original portal art supposed to be? Like what am I looking at? And that means the top spot for this trio of cards goes to Time Warp at number 4. Time Warp is technically the best overall of these lot because it can give any player an extra turn, not just yourself. So you can do some weird politicky stuff with it, but you'll almost always want to be using it to give yourself the extra turn. Most of the arts are all pretty cool too, but I'm not too fond of the Tempest one though. It looks kinda weird. That Strix Haven one though? Mwah. Temporal Trespass gets to take the number 3 spots. It's an 11 mana sorcery that gives you an extra turn, then exiles itself. 
However, it has Delve, meaning you can exile a card from your graveyard to discount it by one for each card exiled. So, Temporal Trespass can be cast for as little as 3 mana. Cards you don't need anymore are just going to stay in your graveyard, so you may as well be delving them since you're not going to be doing anything with them anyways. In spell slinging decks, you're going to be going through a bunch of cantrips, which makes casting Temporal Trespass cheaply trivial. It's a fantastic star that's a key part of the Pioneer Phoenix decks, and it's had a fantastic place in many commander decks, especially in long games where you're casting a ton of spells to push your advantage over everyone else. And for the top 2, we've arrived at the reserve list cards, and the last artifact on this list takes the number 2 spot, and that goes to Time Vault. For 2 mana, you get an artifact that enters the battlefield tap and doesn't untap. Instead, you can skip your turn to untap it, then you can tap it to take an extra turn. While this might seem like a lot of restrictions, it's an incredibly powerful card that's banned in every format it's legal in and restricted in vintage. It does need some help to function, and back in the day you'd mix cards like Instill Energy and Animate Artifact together, so you had a free way of infinite turns. For newer ages, you could use Voltaic Key to get the job done much more efficiently. If you're set up, Time Vault is better than the number 1 card, but it's the fact you need set up, it's what puts it just barely behind it. Time Vault is so good, some people even consider this card to be part of the Power 9 in place of Time Twister, and honestly for pretty good reason. Once it's set up, it's almost impossible to stop, especially since everything it does can be done at instant speed. Number 1 probably comes as no surprise, and that's Time Walk. Like Time Vault, it's banned everywhere and restricted in vintage. For just 2 mana, you get to take an extra turn. While Temporal Mastery can be cost for the same cost, it still needs a specific requirement to do so, and it gets exiled. Time Walk is just straight up 2 mana that goes to the graveyard that lets you loop it a bunch. Unlike Time Vault, Time Walk is immediately useful without setup, and there's pretty much never a time you don't want to see it. Time Vault needs cards that enable it, but Time Walk enables itself, and this is why Time Walk is the best extra turn spell of all time, and probably always will be. And we've made it to the end of the video. If you made it this far, you should consider subscribing and leave a like and a comment below on what you agree with, disagree with, or other lists like this you might want to see. Till next time, I've been JakePig, thank you for watching.